I was just trying to start my stream and I was like, you know, changing the title, turn my camera on, all this stuff. I just got back and uh, I get a ping and I'm like, what the fuck is that? It's a Twitter post. It's a Twitter post from uh, Overwatch Twitter. A little bit of tradition, a little bit of innovation. Kiriko Kamori's origin story. Learn more info. So I was like, oh shit, that's crazy. So I clicked on the link and there's a blog post with a bunch of stuff. I didn't, I didn't even and then that's not even all. I looked at the YouTube just to see, because I want to go see like, oh, I want to watch the origin story on YouTube because it's better quality. And look what I found, a fucking dev update. I was like, huh? Let's go in order. We looked at the tweet. Her name is Kiriko Kamimori. And this, is her origin story. For generations, my family has served and protected our city by following traditional paths. My grandmother devoted herself to the fox spirit who taught her the ancient way of healing. Whereas my mother has chosen the path of the blade. Wait, that's Hanamura. Passing down time-honored skills through training and discipline. Wait, this is like the Shimada temple, is it not? I knew each of them wanted me to follow her path, but I couldn't choose. Training quiets my mind and opens me to the Fox Spirit's guidance. And my bond with her lets me protect those who can't fight for themselves. I just picking on they somebody. They both that... made me feel whole. And they both felt like home. For generations, my family has served and protected our city by following traditional paths. Me? <laughs> I made my own. I was gonna say, imagine picking on somebody the instant transmission behind you, but like... <laughs> Holy shit. You know what? Chat, I'm getting that feeling again. That feeling again. It's no... Okay. For those who don't remember or you weren't part of this era of Overwatch, in the last year, Overwatch was like trying to hype up certain things by doing trailers again, um, but they clearly had no budget. So they were doing like in-game scripted things, and they were like, it was like basically like what you consider amateur teams like make is like <laughs> their intro, you know what I mean? It was it was bad. And so it looks like the high quality content's coming back. Um, that feeling of actually Overwatch is cared for and there's good stuff on the way. So uh, I want to watch, I want to go through this dev post, um, but I'm actually going to watch the dev update first. Let's do the videos and then we'll do the text. Let's get it. Hey everyone, my name is Q Fang and I'm the lead character concept artist on Overwatch 2. Hi everyone, my name is Kyung So Min, and I'm an associate narrative designer on Overwatch 2. And today, we are here to talk about Kiriko, the newest support hero joining our roster. Kiriko grew up in Kanazaka, and she was raised by her mother and grandmother. Her family has ancestral ties to the Kanazaka Shrine, which worships the fox spirit. Her grandmother taught Kiriko the responsibilities of taking care of the shrine, the importance of traditions, rituals, and community. Her mother, on the other hand, is a fierce ninja and believed in taking action, standing up for yourself, and fighting for what's right. We can see in Kiriko that she bridges these two sensibilities together, the traditional and the modern, the fighting. Yo, Kiriko feet guy in chat. Yo, fucking relax, bro. You've been going at it for like 10 minutes. Shut the fuck up. ...and the healing. Kiriko is a strong, badass woman. She will do anything to protect her family and her community, even if that means she has to bend a few rules. She's a trickster, like the fox spirit. Kiriko grew up alongside Hanzo and Genji. Her mother actually trained the Shimadas, and uh, she was especially close to Genji. 
uh, since they both are kind of on the mischievous kind of side. Yeah, like he would take her to the arcade in Hanamura, and uh, they're definitely up to no good in and out of the Shimada castle. Carried on the wind. Kiriko witnessed the fall of the Shimadas when she was young. Oh uh, the assassination of the Shimada clan head left a power vacuum within the community. Uh, a rival clan of the Hashimoto took advantage of that and took over. They terrorized the community, and Kiriko saw all these injustices firsthand, and they took her father as hostage. To stop them, she joined a ragtag group of young women and men called the Yokai. Coming from all walks of life, they fight the Hashimoto and protect community members. They're a small group, but with Kiriko's cunning personality, they show that the youth of Kanazaka should not be underestimated. So Jingles. Kiriko was developed really with 5v5 in mind. Uh, she's high mobility, she's a single target hybrid healer. She is Wait. fast. She can get to your little skirmishes, which happens Wait, a lot. Wait, is this the first time you've got to see this? A lot more often in 5v5 now, so she's super effective. Yeah, and she, she's very much like an- Wait. Wait. Yo, wait a minute. Hang on, is this the first? Wait, I think. Oh, you can't see this UI, I'm sorry. This is the first time you guys have seen it. Yes, okay. All right, let me, I'll go up here for a bit, okay? This is the first time you guys have seen this. Also, I'll make me a little bit smaller. Uh, sorry. Um, this is the first time you guys have got to see this. So, I, for those who don't know, I got to play this, actually. Um, which is why I was, like, so shocked for a second. Because uh, I was like, wait, what? So, guys, this is what her UI looks like. So, a single target. You can kind of see how her healing works. Sorry, also, I, we're gonna watch the whole thing, but like really uh, fast, just to, like break it down. These like little indicators are like basically to let you know how fast she's gonna stop throwing her cards because you can't like throw them one individually. It's just a burst. It's just like hit it once and she throws all of them. So you can kind of like redirect it while it's, it's high flying. Mobility. It's a single you see how like these blue ones, these are all misses. All of this healing right here that flew by, I'm in the way again, aren't I? All of the healing in the top here that flew by is missing. All the blue stuff. That's all missed healing. Um, with 5v5 in the mind. yellow is uh, like high is landed mobility. healing. She's a single target hybrid healer. She is fast. So she you see the yellow right there? The yellow that was coming in? I'll play it back a little bit slower. Is this yellow right here, the yellow cards, like while it's turning yellow while it's going to you, that means you're hitting the target and you're actually healing them. Can you run into the blue healing and it heals you? Yes, you can. Um, that's why Kiriko technically has unlimited healing range. Um, but she can't, after it hits a certain point, she can't direct it anymore. And it's just completely up to chance. Like something has to walk into it. So like I tested it in the training range. Um, I went as far away from the training bots as possible and threw it at them. And it was blue, 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 blue. And then it hit them, you know, and vulnerability is a 14 second cooldown. Um, let me see. Let me, let me show you. Okay, so that's her invulnerability. Hold on. I'm going to play it a little bit slower because a lot happens right here. A lot is happening. Single target. So that's her, that's her, uh, her, um, uh, I don't want to use the word immortality. It's like invulnerability. And you can tell by the white smoke that everybody has for a second. The white smoke is basically how you tell, um, that they have it. Does it bounce? No, it's spl it's like on a nade. It splashes off the ground. So this is what it looks like in real time. It's like this is not. It's not that bad. The only thing that it's really bad against <coughs> is Rhine Shatter and potentially Diva Bomb, uh, because you can time it on the Diva Bomb. And Rhine Shatter, she technically can. So she's very much. It's a proactive ability. But against Ryan Shatter, it can be a, a reactive ability, and that's not too fun. So I hope that gets changed, but we'll see. She's high mobility. She's a single target timing. hybrid healer. She is fast. It's, she it can... is so quick. You want to see it one more time? Like, look at how look at how fast it wears off. Ready? Watch the Zenyatta in real time. High mobility. She's a single target hybrid healer. She is fast. Did you see that? It's like a second, maybe even like less. Like it's a second. Um, so it's really not bad at all. Hybrid healer. She is. That was some fast burst heals. She definitely can do good amounts of burst healing. 
Just a um, single target. But the speed. Target hybrid healer. She is fast. She can get. Like, okay. Watch this. Watch the first one. Ready? So she's going to try to heal this Sojourn as she's backing up. She actually misses a lot of the um, the heal. This is why people like ML said that they are like, uh, you know. They have like a crazy, what's it called? A crazy high skill ceiling. Watch this. Uh, she's Watch high mobility. She's so she misses a lot of the shots onto the Sojourn, right? So like, single target yes, up close, she up close can be really good uh, healing. Can and like, obviously heal this straight up. Um, But it's not. Like, you have to be so much closer. Get to your little skirmishes, which happens a lot more often in 5v5 now. So she's super effective. So this is a good example right here of, like, how she's not that good at distance. So watch how, like, she goes to heal up the Rhine. Single target it's really a lot harder. Healer. She is fast. She can get to your little skirmishes, which happens a lot more often in 5v5 now. So she's super effective. And the yellow, the yellow basically means, like, it's on track to hit them. So, like, I'm assuming at that point it's kind of heat-seeking um, because it's only, like, in, within her small area. Is her primary fire or secondary? Her primary fire is the healing. Her primary fire is the healing. Hopefully, we'll see more of the secondary fire after. But uh, if you see in the bottom right-hand corner, the 7 out of 12, her kunai, um, that's what her, like, this right here, obviously the kunai in her hand, um, that's her damage. I'm assuming we're going to see more of it here in a second, but... Uh, maybe I'll just stay up here. I think this is a better spot. Who was developed really with 5v5 in mind. Uh, she's high mobility. She's is that the ammo count for a talisman? Besides the ammo, how fast she reloads? She does not reload. Um, her The way her talismans work is when you throw them, really with five you have to finish them, and then you can start a new set. So watch. She's mind. healing consistently uh, here, right? So she's out of talismans. It's going to fill back up there like for a split second. You can basically just hold left click and she will just keep throwing them as they come available. She's a single target hybrid healer. She is fast. She can get to your little skirmishes, which happens a lot more often. It's not really like a reload. That's why like some people say like it's like kind of like mercy healing. 5v5 now. So she's super effective. Yeah, and she, she's very much like another battle healer. You know, she's in the action, jumps in and out. Um, not the kind of sip. So did you see that? Watch the cleanse on the Zen. See Zen's anti. Watch this. Now, um, boom, boom. It all kind of makes sense now with Junker Queen and Ana. Beta two was like the anti anti nade meta. Kiriko kind of removes that. Not the kind of sit back and heal type of hero. Shouldn't have put oh. your head there. Yeah, I oh, think you see her shots. Okay, so this is her, this is her right click. This is her right click right here, chat. I'll watch more one more time without me yapping. Comes in and out. Um, not the kind of sit back and heal type of hero. Shouldn't have put your head there. Yeah, I think a lot. That's of her right clicks. So, it's really cool. Um, but you can tell it's like a very small projectile hitbox. Uh, and her reload animation. Watch her reload animation here. It's sick. Not the kind of sit back and heal type of hero. Shouldn't have put your head there. Yeah, I think a lot of experience. Do you know what I mean? So, her right clicks uh, don't feel that impactful, but if you land headshots, oh shit, you can pop the fuck off. Battle healer, you know, she's in the action, jumps in and out. Um. Why are they using bots? My guy, this is a trailer to show off what she looks like. They're not gonna have Overwatch League players fucking jumping around. What? what? Not the kind of sit back and heal type of hero. Shouldn't have put your head there. Yeah, I think a lot of experienced players will have fun with her, and I think a lot of DPS players will love her. Underestimated me, ne? From day one, the really, so uh, cool. her fox was there in the design. It felt right. It fit the character visually, and um, the it, the fox was based on the Japanese Inari, which is the fox spirit, and it's it's a guardian protector kind of spirit. In Japanese folklore, foxes are also known to represent cunning and smarts, which matches Kiriko's personality as well. Now I'm having fun. Kiriko actually started as an ecology boss unit um, that was uh, part of the uh, the ninja ecology. Her hairband and bandana um, kind of comes from classic depictions of ninjas in pop culture. And it's got a symbol on the top. It's basically the kanji for kitsune, for fox turned diagonally, which is really cool. Um, the original design had a giant shuriken with ball bearings in it, inspired by 
fidget spinners at the time. Ah, oh, dude, they were gonna hit us with the the demon wind shuriken. Oh man! Um, but we tried to we tried to maintain that as she became a support hero. However, learning from the past mistakes when we tried to force a design and a concept together, we ended up just kind of retooling her to look more like a support hero. Some of the old, some of the new. So Kiriko's primary ability is the healing Ofuda. Ofudas are these paper talismans believed to be imbued with powers. When you do this ability, you see these Ofuda paper slits firing in two, and they home in on allies. They're a little slow, but you can use your ally teleport ability okay, to offset okay, that. Okay, okay, okay. This shit right here is fucking uh, busted. This shit right here is fucking busted. Um, the only catch-22 of this, the Without only catch-22 of that ability is that you always spawn um, basically closest to where, where you came from. So it's not like you can like go past them or whatever. So like, let's say they're sitting behind cover and you TP to them and all of a sudden you're in the middle of the open and you just get headshot. You know what I mean? A little slow, but you can use your ally teleport ability to but, offset but that, or you can use the slowness in your advantage and you can preemptively shoot them if you foresee that a teammate will need healing. Her secondary True. fire is uh, she throws out a kunai. And these are actually very fast in contrast to the Ofuda. Um, there's low overall damage, but it crits for a, a ton of damage. Headshot. Right? So very, very powerful in the hands of an accurate player. And the idea here was to split her abilities thematically, having half of her abilities kind of be supportive with, you know, the healing Ofuda. And the other half is more about the offense and damage with the kunai. And uh, yeah, this honors the kind of narrative elements of her mother and grandmother at the same time. Mm -hmm. Also, the first iteration of Genji had the kunai, so the team's really happy that we're bringing it back. It's Come 120, on, not 150. One of her abilities is the ally teleport. She can teleport directly to an ally. She can even teleport through walls. And the distance is pretty generous, um, so you can travel across maps pretty far and pretty quickly. Uh, this makes her a great support because she can get to her teammates quickly and just provide the healing power that the team needs. Her second ability is called the Protection Suzu. Suzu are a small bell, and Kiriko throws them out, and it makes allies invulnerable briefly, and they also cleanse it's Very short. Uh, this is great to combo with her teleport ability to quickly get in there and support a teammate. Uh, you can also throw it down on yourself if you're in a sticky situation, and it kind of saves your hair. <laughs> um, but it does have a long cooldown, so it requires good Small judgment versus and healing. timing. It's like 40 Sounds healing. Like a really good counter to like sleep dart. Yes, and Junker Queen's anti-heal. <laughs> Her I, passive ability is the wall climb. She I think they very, very specifically didn't show Shatter there because it is very, it is very anti Rhine, and I'm not gonna lie, like almost too much. I, and I know it might be a little bit biased, um, but y'all are gonna play the game in two weeks anyways. So come back to me in two weeks and tell me if I was right. Let's see my changes. Her passive ability is the wall climb. She can scale yeah, she, walls like Genji. So for those who don't understand what I'm saying is if you shatter a team and she throws her thing, everyone just instantly stands up. And they're invulnerable for a second. So um, so like let's say you shatter four and she's the one that doesn't get hit and she just throws her thing. You can go up and go start your first swing and then everybody stands up and just fucking blows your ass up. Hanzo. That's because that's what I mean. It's a it's a res that's where it's a res uh, a reactive ability, which is bad. It's like lamp, as opposed to a proactive ability. Um, which is the current like iteration, which Chained is like together, not bad. we just found it was appropriate. So finally, Akiri goes ultimate. It's called the Kitsune Rush. It's a huge buff that gives you a ton of movement speed, attack speed, reload speed, and also cooldown reduction on your abilities um, on all allies affected. Um, very very powerful. It's great for I I dude they do people do not understand how broken this is. Watch this soldier shots, it's and like this applies to everything, watches cooldowns as well. Huge buff that gives you a ton of movement speed, attack speed, reload speed, and also cooldown reduction on your abilities um, on all allies affected. Um, very, very powerful. It's great for just kind of initiating an attack on an objective. Um, and actually, originally it was just going to be the fox, mm -hmm. but you can combo kind of nano with that. I wouldn't. Where the fox was going. It's a, it's a good so enough ult on its own. Corey Gates were more done out of just yeah, give you kind of a target and seeing where the fox is going, but it just ended up also looking just absolutely beautiful. Kiriko is voiced by Sally Amaki. 
Sally did an amazing job bringing a cool girl energy to Kiriko. Her voice is cool and wry, and she has a wicked sense of humor that is dry as a desert. Uh, she really sounds like the lone wolf, cool girl that everyone at school respects. And I'm really looking forward to looking at the player's response at all of her digs, because she will take a dig at anyone. And especially the uh, Genji and Hanzo conversations. Uh, keep an ear out for those, because there's a lot of inside jokes, history, and humor there. And that about wraps it up for Kiriko. We can't wait for all of you to get a chance to play her. See you next time. Can't change the world by following all the rules. Okay. Um, let the Kitsune guide you. A first look at Kiriko's concept and playstyle. She's been all of our, on all of our minds since teased her in the June reveal event, and now she's here. Kiriko Karamori, holy shit, is staged to join the support roster on Overwatch's 35th hero, and we're excited to share more about her personality, toolkit, and gameplay. Drawing on her Miko in Kino, Kinoichi, Kinoichi training, Kiriko supports, supports her team through gentle healing, deadly precision, and fluid mobility. The idea for her new her, her, the idea for her kit was to create a dual damage support hero with strong mobility and a high skill ceiling. Kiriko can be rewarding for high skill players while also being a great healing option for beginning players. She was created by narrative and de hero design mostly in tandem since Kiriko's concept art was originally drafted for a PVE enemy from fire. the Ninja Ecology. Wait, what? She was created by narrative and hero design mostly in tandem since Kiriko's concept art was originally drafted for a PvE enemy and ninja ecology. Huh. Her concept art inspired the direction of both her gameplay and narrative, and we're happy that her big personality shines through her playstyle. So I guess this is some of the, the concepts for her. Actually kind of cool. I hope this is a skin someday. I like this look a lot. Uh... To hear more about the process of bringing Kiriko to concept at launch, we've been uh, we talked to three designers who worked for her: hero designer Josh Noah, and narrative designers Josh Groot and uh, Kung So Min. <clears throat> healing of Afuda, Kunai, and Wall Climb. Kiriko's primary fi primary fire healing of Uda are talismans that heal her teammates. She fires up to ten healing projectiles, depending on how long the primary fire key is held. Wait, what? I thought it just held. I just thought it threw all of them. That's I don't remember that. Maybe I just didn't see a reason not to. Uh, healing of Fuda is a single target heal with blue talismans that hone in on allies and turn yellow when they heal. The charms are breezy and slow, so the further you are from your teammate, the longer it takes to heal them. The visual and sound effects associated with Kiriko's primary heal draws on themes from nature, and we tried to match this in her lines that actually explains so much because I remember it being like very satisfying to heal um, so you'll hear Kiriko saying things like the breeze brings relief or like a gentle rain when she heals allies her breezy tranquil primary fire is a stark contrast to the tempo of her next ability kunai Kiriko's secondary fire kunai are small leaf shaped knives that she throws one at a time the knives have overall damage and do additional crit damage, and Kiriko isn't afraid to taunt enemies who get caught in her kunai's path. Kiriko is a mischievous person, and she'll sometimes tease the enemies when she eliminates, says Group. She'll say things like, I thought you were the sniper, when she lands a, a kill on a Widowmaker or Ana. Kiriko's passive ability, Wall Climb, allows her to scale up walls. We decided on Wall Climb because Kiriko went through the same training as Hanzo and Genji, so it makes sense that they would share the same sense of background, No explains. Each of the Shimadas, Kiriko also has a special mobility that's skills specific to her. Makes sense. Um, Swift Step allows Kiriko to teleport directly to an ally within a certain distance, even through walls. When you activate the ability, you need to have a target before you can confirm the movement. <clears throat> Confirming an ally uh, will let you move directly to them. Wait, what? <clears throat> Sorry. When you activate the ability, you need to have a target. Okay, yeah, so... Basically, I think some people have asked if this works with, um, like, Mercy when you die, or when there's, like, someone dead. No, they have to be alive. 
Uh, confirming an ally will go directly to them. Seeing your teammates die behind the wall can be frustrating, Noah explains. Seeing your team's health bar ticking down through walls, but you can't quite get a line of sight on them. With this ability, not even walls will prevent Kiriko from covering a generous amount of space to help her teammates. She loves to kid around with her teammates, so you can expect to see her witty interactions with her teleport. Although she's a fierce hero, Kiriko loves to play, Min says. She'll give Cassie a howdy when she jumps into him, or when she jumps to him, and tell Mercy I'll be your angel when Kiriko jumps to her. Wait, that's actually kind of hilarious. Um, Swift so stepping at the right time, though, is key to use my utilizing the ability effectively true you want to be careful about traveling to injured teammates because something probably going on over there if their health bar is in the red once you teleport into the line of fire you won't be able to swift step back until the ability is ready again this might sound dangerous but for but like every good fox kiriko has a is full of tricks when fights take a turn for the worse she has another ability up her sleeve <clears throat> uh, we've seen that before so the suzu Protection Suzu is a small bell-shaped projectile that allows brief or allows or makes allies briefly invulnerable and cleanses negative status effects when it impacts the ground or ally directly. Um, so it's like I don't need it splashes. <clears throat> the ability affects all allies within a small area of effect AoE, including Kiriko if it throws it off her feet. <clears throat> Sorry. Something in my throat. Uh, we wanted to make sure Protection Suzu Suzu has an active ability. Wait, we wanted to make Protection Suzu, an active ability that Kiriko could use to defend and engage with her team, says Noah. We want to enable players to use this ability actively instead of holding on to it in response to other abilities. So this is what I meant about the whole shatter thing. It's very much an like a like a, a forward ability instead of a reactive ability, but it also does say anti as well. Um, that is like what it seems to be like the whole like design behind it, which is why it's such a small dur uh, duration. Uh, during Overwatch 2 beta, no one explains this sort of ability hoarding was something the team saw after Moira's updates were implemented. When we changed Moira's damage orb to necrotic orbs, players held onto that ability for long periods of time. The brief immortality, paired with a cleanse, provided Kiriko with a chance to save teammates from negative status effects and death blows. Protection Suzu is a, chance, is a source of a lot of Kiriko's utility, but it comes a long way since we first started ideating on it. <clears throat> the first idea of this ability was a smoke bomb inspired by her ninja training. That would have been hilarious. However, early playtests led to some interesting observations. We tried a vision uh, uh, occlusion, occlusion, a vision occlusion that blocked enemy sight. Said Noah, but the game would become one giant smoke cloud with a Kiriko on both teams. <laughs> True. Uh, teams also began to develop interesting playstyles around the ability. Instead of using Smoke Bomb as a tool to disengage, teams would throw it ahead of them as visual cover to pop up in front of the enemy team. No calls from internal playtests. Yeah, that's, that's about what I thought. Uh, ultimately, the final version of the Protection Suzu fits with Kiriko's narrative, while also serving an important function not currently present in-game. Although strong, this ability does come with a cooldown that requires diligent judgment and timing. Enemies will watch this ability prior to using ultimates and initial, initiating Fights. Katsune Rush is Kiriko's ultimate ability. She opens her ultimate by saying, Let the Katsune guide you, and she summons a fox that rushes forward, creating a glowing path for her team to, in its wake. The path gives Kiriko and her allies a buff that increases the speed of all allies' actions, including movement speed, rate of fire, and cooldowns. Katsune's path is marked by gateways and allies to be within the gateways to get the buff. Stepping out of the path will remove the ultimate's buffs. Uh, the fox is central to Kiriko's design, and her ultimate felt like a natural place the fox would come out, explains Noah. Kiriko works alongside her fox, similarly to how Genji and Hanzo work alongside their dragons. Kiriko is a natural leader, and her ultimate or, or ultimate ability reflects this. Katsune Rush is a linear path that encourages teammates to rush forward and find an objective. Well, Kiriko and her can direct her teammates with his ultimate, making space for them to engage in fights and capture specific areas of the map. Some of the old, some of the new. She's cunning, agile, and a bit of a trickster. Although some lighthearted, she's a powerful protector with a strong moral compass and believes in taking care of people around her. Our goal with her story was to celebrate the powerful women of our roster. Min explains Kiriko is a strong human with strong values and convictions. I definitely put my kick-ass woman pants on to write for her. Kiriko uh, respects traditions to honor her grandmother, who gave her last name to hide and protect her. 
but she recognizes the need to change, adapt, and progress. Just like her mother, as Kirika would say, you can't change the world by following all the rules. Damn. Damn, dude. 